Good afternoon, I'm your host, Brian Buckmeyer here at the Long Crime Trial Network. We don't have any live trials for you today, so we're looking at quite a few different cases, looking at some recaps, and also looking forward to some new cases. The one case I want to look forward to is the Kellen Winslow Jr. case. Now, if you recall that case, we did it back in May. He was charged with an assortment of crimes, all sexual in nature, with five different Jane Doe's. Now, as you can see there on the screen, there was an assortment of uh, hung juries, guilties, um, undecided. Uh, we're going to walk through some of the Jane Doe's today, inform you of which ones he's going to be retried for and which ones he's not because he was already found guilty. Um, we'll start from the top and we'll give you quick snippets of the different testimony that we heard from the different witnesses. Let's get right into it. So let's break this down for you, okay? This, what you heard, was testimony from Jane Doe number one, if you recall. This was the one who was transient at the time of the incident, that time being March 17th of 2018. She said that she reported some four days afterwards um, the charges that Kellen Winslow Jr. is facing as it applies to her as kidnap for a specific felony crime where the jury had a deadlock, forcible rape where the jury had a deadlock, and, force, and forcible oral copulation where they had a deadlock. Now, I'm joined with a great panel of, of guests here today, both in studio and via Skype. I'm joined with Michelle Heyman Cantor, former Queens prosecutor, Gigi Gonzalez, criminal defense attorney, and Paula Natari here in, in uh, New York with us in studio. Ladies, good afternoon to you all. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. So, Paula, I want to start with you retrying a case. I know there's a lot of debate who has the advantage, whether it be the prosecution or the defense, the question of why are you doing this, because Winslow Jr., um, or the second star, is already facing time for some of the charges, but how do you, as a criminal defense attorney, approach retrials of cases of this nature? Well, usually um, retrials are very difficult for defense lawyers because, you know, it's hard to get that energy, it's hard to get that 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 perfect moment back the first time you cross-examine a witness. And, but I think in this particular case, I think that there were a lot of credibility issues with the defense, and there was, there was a big area as far as surprise in what they would say. And I think having this time to rework the legal issues and what these witnesses are going to say is probably going to benefit the defense. So we'll, we'll, we'll kick it to you then, Michelle, former prosecutor. I, I agree with everything that Paula is saying. Now we're, we're saying that the prosecution has maybe a, a bit of an advantage in retrying cases. You get to iron out certain things. You're not going to see the surprises that the defense attorneys might have sprung on you during cross-examination. But I also, just a little bit of pushback, they deadlocked. So there was something wrong with the testimony, at least in the eyes of the jurors. So what is it that the prosecution needs to do in order to win the day as they're hoping to do with the second trial? Well, that's right. And I think in this particular case, um, Jane Doe one had a bunch of credibility issues. I think she changed her testimony several times and she wasn't as credible as the prosecution needed her to be, which is why they deadlocked. And I think that is the thing that's going to give the prosecution the advantage this go around is that they can prep her maybe a little bit better. They already know what she's going to say. However, with that said, the defense now knows what she said the first time, and that's a lot of impeachment material for them, which means they have a lot to cross her on. They have a lot of things they can use against her if she changes her testimony. So it does go both back and forth in favor of each one, but the prosecution, I think, in this trial is going to have to step up their game with her credibility. So, Gigi, Michelle gave us a, a perfect nugget there, and I think it's kind of alluding right to my question perfectly. You're going to have, for Jane Doe number one, transcript of the pretrial hearing transcript of the first trial and now she's going to go and testify and if if they're not going to do the exact same thing they've got to clean up a little as michelle said there's going to be kind of three slightly different versions of this i mean that's right for impeachment that's right for cross-examination i mean that i would be like a defense attorney like a kid in a candy store that seems like a good thing for us absolutely as a defense attorney this is the right kind of situation you want going into a retrial the opportunity to really tear up a witness and to impeach them wherever you can. And that's where the state's going to really struggle here is to make sure that they clean up Jane Doe number one's testimony to ensure they get a guilty verdict in this case. Now, I want to show you another clip of what happened in that last trial. Very interesting that uh, there's some sort of identification issues that came up during cross-examination from a pretrial hearing. Let's take a listen to what the lawyer had to say during that cross. So this is very interesting. Here, the network, uh, I think maybe this will spark a conversation with our 
with our guests here as well today. Some people see the similarities, some people don't. Paula, you said they do look kind of similar. I could see why you would say that. And the one question I had for, at least for this witness that I was kind of curious as to why the defense didn't bring up, cross-racial identification. I know some people kind of hesitate against it because like, oh, they're like, no, no, I can tell the difference between two people, like I'm not racist. But it's not a concept of racism. It's actual science that people of one race have the ability to distinguish themselves, other people in the similar race, as opposed to people outside the race. Right. So why not raise that at trial to, to further show that she might be mistaken? Yeah, I think it's an I think it's an issue on definitely for the defense. If you know, if you make a mistaken ID, just that fact alone. I mean, jurors can sit there and say, um, you know, back in their deliberating room that that these guys really do kind of look si similar. But the fact that a witness makes the wrong ID in and of itself is damning. It's it's so damaging and it's powerful. Um, but you know, this this Jane Doe one for me has. It's going to be hard to uh, rehabilitate this witness. I mean, her affect is so terrible. Her, her, the way she speaks. I mean, I was just listening before, and and the fact that she couldn't ID. I mean, I think that's going to be a real problem for the prosecution. Yeah, I want to be. It's going to be interesting to see if they both go with the same playbook. If they change some things up, how they adjust to that. I mean, that's going to be the great part about being able to watch these trials gavel to gavel here at the network. But. We're going to continue more dissecting this case and getting some expert legal analysis from our guests here after this break.